So now that we have the basics of Excel covered, it's time to move on to exploring formulas because formulas are the backbone of Excel. They allow us to perform different types of calculations. We can analyze data with formulas. We can tidy up data and so much more. And if you're new to formulas and functions in Excel, then don't worry, we're going to start from the beginning so you completely understand what you're doing. Now, there are over 450 functions in Excel. Notice I'm using the terminology functions and you'll hear people use functions and formulas interchangeably. But what is the real difference between the two? Well, functions are what we use in a formula. And in Excel, we have a number of inbuilt functions ready for us to use. Now you'll find all of the functions on the formulas tab in this group here, function library, because all of the formulas are divided down into different categories. So we have some functions in here related to financial calculations. We have our logical formulas underneath here. You might have heard people speak about if and true, false, lambda, things like that. We have a text group for all of our text functions, a date and time group, lookup and reference. This is where we have things like VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, MATCH, OFFSET. And then finally, we have a MATH and TRIG group. And then underneath more functions, we have more groups, but I would say that these ones underneath more, these are more niche to specific industries. You also have a recently used drop down just here, and this is going to show you the last 10 or so functions that you use, making them super easy to find again. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to use some of these functions to create a simple formula. But before we get on to that, it is important to understand some basic principles of working with formulas in Excel because it's really important to understand the order of operations. And this lesson is probably going to take you all the way back to your maths lessons at school. Notice I have written out here in the spreadsheet bod mass and pid mass. Now, the reason why I have both of these is because in different countries, different terminology is used. For example, in the UK, where I'm from, when I was growing up, we use the bod mass rule, whereas I know in other countries you might see it written as PID mass or even PED mass. Basically the same thing, we just use different words for some of these items. For example, in the UK we tend to say brackets, whereas in the US they tend to say parenthesis. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to call it bod mass simply because that's what I'm more familiar with. And if you're not familiar with the bod mass rule, let me show you how this works, because this carries through all Excel formulas. Now it might be I have a series of numbers in a cell. So let's say I've got six and I've got three. Now, if I wanted to add these two numbers up in Excel, that's a very simple calculation. Now we need to tell Excel that we're doing a calculation. So we do that by typing equals into the cell. Now I could type six plus three and hit enter. That's going to work and give me the correct result. Now, when we type numbers directly into the formula, we call this hard coding. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. We're hard coding these numbers in, and it means that if either of these numbers up here change, so maybe this one goes to five and this one goes to two, the formula down here isn't going to update because we've hard coded the numbers into the formula. So in general, the way that we work with calculations in Excel is that we use the cell reference as opposed to the actual number. So instead of typing in those numbers, I would do equals G5 plus G6 and hit enter. Because now if I were to change these numbers, you can see that the formula updates because it's referencing the cell that the number is in. So the number one rule of creating formulas is to always make sure that wherever possible, and it's not possible in all scenarios, you use the cell reference as opposed to hard coding the number. So that's all good. But where does this bod mass rule come in? Well, let's say we were doing a calculation that was a little bit more complicated. So let's say I wanted to do 10 plus two divided by two. 
So the answer in my head that I'm looking for here is 6. 10 plus 2, which gives us 12, and then divide by 2, which gives us 6. So let's see how Excel calculates this formula. Let's hit enter. We get 11. Why are we getting 11? Well, if we take a look at this, what Excel is doing is 2 divided by 2, which gives us 1, and then it's adding the 10. Now, the reason why it's calculating that way is all down to this bod mass rule, because this is the order that Excel will perform calculations in. So it will calculate everything that is contained within brackets or parentheses first. It will then do any orders or indices, so things like square roots, then division, then multiplication, and then finally addition and subtraction. So because division comes before addition in the BODMAS rule, it's going to do the part of the formula where we have that divide symbol. So it's going to do 2 divided by 2, and then it's going to add the 10. So in this case, it's not the answer I was hoping for. This formula is wrong. So how could we change this according to BODMAS to make this calculation correct? Well, what we could do is we could add brackets and let Excel know which part of that formula we want it to calculate first. So I could type it like this instead. We can say equals, let's open a bracket. I want it to do 10 plus 2. First of all, we can close the bracket and then I want it to divide by 2. So according to BODMAS, it's going to do what's in brackets first and then it's going to do the division and that then gives us the correct answer. So this is the basic principle that runs through all Excel formulas. And it's really important to get your head around this before you move on to starting to use Excel functions and building out your own formulas. And another thing to note when you're working with formulas in Excel is that if you want to do an addition, we use a plus, a minus is a dash, a multiplication is the asterisk symbol, and division is a forward slash. So the order of operations, a really important point to get your head around before you move on to more complex calculations. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.